Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And today we're going to be taking another look at how to align your joint helmet-mounted queuing system, helmet-mounted display here in the FA-18C Hornet. Now lately, I've been seeing an issue crop up with a lot of DCS Hornet pilots, and that is pilots neglecting to align their helmet-mounted display during the cold start procedure. This has been affecting both the Fetter and F-18 pilots in DCS who have the cold start procedure down but are forgetting this new addition, as well as DCS World pilots who are brand new to the F-18 and it's just slipping their mind because they haven't checked their checklist. Now in this video, we're going to purposefully neglect to align our helmet mounting display during the cold start procedure to take a look at what symbology is actually affected in your helmet mounted display by misaligning the HMD and then show you guys that you can in fact align the helmet mounted display in flight. Now in real life the HMD in the FA-18 and other aircraft do tend to lose their alignment throughout a very long flight, say a long ferry flight, a long flight providing on-call casts over the top of uh, you know a convoy or something of that nature and the HMD will start to wander as a result. So you can always align that HMD once again and get it back to perfect while you're flying the jet. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Here we are in our newly started up FA-18C Hornet on the ramp here at King Hussein Air Base. To show you guys the different errors that can be imparted by an unaligned HMD, we're going to fly a small strike mission out towards Damascus International Airport and take a look at the different errors that can occur. We can see that in our jet right now, we have an unaligned helmet mounted display. This is evidenced by the fact that on our support menu page, the left hand middle OSB is not assigned to an HMD menu option. This shows us that we have not done the built in test for our HMD and therefore that menu option is not available yet. However, this is where it gets really confusing, and I think this is why a lot of DCS World pilots are neglecting to actually get their HMD aligned in the cold start procedure before they get up into the air and get themselves into combat. So let's go ahead and turn our HMD on. And we can see that when it first pops up on our screen over our eye, everything looks completely and totally normal. This is because all of the symbology that is currently being displayed on our HMD is all static information. This is all stuff that's coming from our air data computer inside of our FA-18, and it's not moving outside of our aircraft. So therefore, the HMD doesn't have to be aligned to show this information. So like a box with your airspeed is not going to be moving. A box with your altitude is also not going to be moving. So it's not like this symbology is going to be, say, tipped on its side or canted or something like that because you haven't aligned the HMD. This is just stuff that's completely static inside of your aircraft. If it's moving outside of your aircraft, like, say, data link uh, contacts or targets on the ground, things of that nature, that's where that alignment is going to come into play. Now, if we look over here off to our right at our wingman, it looks like things are totally normal and totally correct. It shows the little circle with the B for our number two off to our right. However, the fact that our number two is so close to us on the ramp here, it looks like everything is aligned and totally fine. But as our contact, our wingman, our number two here, it gets further and further away, his data link contact is gonna develop more and more and more errors as a result. So while everything might look absolutely fine and totally normal to you, especially to those FA-18 veteran pilots who have neglected to accidentally, you know, uh, align that HMD, everything looks totally normal. And you're like, okay, cool, I'm ready to take off. But unfortunately, that is not the truth of the matter. So with that, let's go ahead and taxi on out and we uh, will fly out towards Damascus and we'll take another more in-depth look at the errors of an unaligned HMD. Here we are up in the air now as our number two starts to join in formation with us and we can already see just how massive that error is. And the further you look behind the HUD, behind your ejection seat, the higher the error gets with the data link contacts. 
and we can see him getting closer and closer. And as it gets closer, those errors start to reduce, just like when we were sitting on the ramp there and it looked like there was no error at all. So I find that to be very, very interesting. Of course, the data link and having that circle with your nice B over it or any other PPLI uh, symbology on your HMD is not always perfect, but uh, it's definitely a lot better than it currently is now. And that really shows you what we talked about earlier about how it's not the static things in your cockpit that are affected, it's the moving things outside of your cockpit that are affected by the misalignment of the HMD. So we'll have our jet level out and we'll go for waypoint two with our coupled autopilot. And it's still lagging behind him, but it's getting better as he gets closer and closer and closer. Of course, any movements in, especially in the roll axis, are going to really compound any errors, even with a perfectly aligned HMD. And as he gets closer and closer, and the formation gets nicer and nicer, the error of our PPLI for our wingman over here gets less and less and less. However, it is still lagging behind him quite a bit. So another thing that's really, really interesting is if you have a misaligned HMD, it will severely affect your ability to uh, do high off bore sight shots with your AIM-9 X-rays. So let's go ahead and select an AIM-9 and we will tell our wingman to continue on route so that way we can get behind them a little bit. And we'll pull back on the power so we can drop back a little bit and we'll get coupled mode on our autopilot turned off. Now let's see how fast he's going. Okay. And as we try to lock him up with an AIM-9X, look at that. But if we put it over his PPLI, that's when we can start to actually get an AIM-9X ray lock on him. Which is, really shows just how big of an error having a misaligned HMD really is, because you won't be able to lock anyone up unless you actually have the error corrected by misaligning the reticle for your AIM-9 X-ray over a different spot in the sky rather than over the actual aircraft itself. We can see that my locked AIM-9 X reticle is more or less where the PPLI is for our wingman. So let's unlock him again, and we can see we can definitely lock him over here, but if we put it over the aircraft itself, we cannot lock him up. I can press the uh, cage on cage all I want, but if I look over here, boom, I can lock him up, no problem, and I could shoot him down if I wanted to. Obviously, he's a friend, so we're not going to do that. But I just wanted to show you guys that because I think it's very, very interesting and really highlights how much you'd be shooting yourself in the foot to get yourself into combat in an F-A-18 with a misaligned HMD. Now this also applies to using the ACM radar modes in the F-A-18 as well. So if you're trying to, say, put your radar into boresight mode and then lock somebody up that way, that will also induce an error where you have to more or less put your radar reticle over the PPLI for another aircraft rather than over the top of the actual aircraft itself. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the errors that are induced with the air to ground mode of the HMD. This is where the difference is very, very stark and you can really see just how difficult it would be to engage targets with a misaligned HMD. Okay guys, so our target area that we're gonna use today for our example of misaligned HMD errors in the air to ground arena is going to be Damascus International Airport. And we have some fires started down there on the airport that will help us illustrate our point here. This is where the misalignment of your HMD will have a marked effect on your ability to execute your mission. So we'll continue on out here. There is 
the target area down there. So let's go ahead and go into air to ground mode and we will bring up our FLIR page over here. And we'll go sensor control switch forward to be able to set a target down there. So let's go ahead and put our targeting pod right at the base of that fire. All right, so we set the target and we'll go sensor control switch right to keep the target from walking too much in our HMD. And we'll adjust the contrast and we can see even though our HMD thinks that our target area is right near that fire down there, we can see that our targeting pod is looking nowhere near a fire in any way, shape, or form. If we move the actual targeting pod around and actually find our target and we put it over the top of, say, our fire that we originally wanted to go after, we can see that the HMD has it way the heck over there and you can see it kind of moving around a little bit slightly even as our crosshairs down on the target area itself are not moving at all. Now let's go ahead and delete this target and let's do a waypoint designate on our target down there and you can see that our waypoint is way off where that waypoint is actually set is right on top of that fire down there and we can see that is a good maybe one, two-ish nautical miles of uh, error that is shown on our HMD down there. So again, it just makes it very, very, very difficult to actually engage ground targets with your HMD. Because we can see our crosshairs are right on the ramp area next to the fire, but our HMD is showing it way off. And you can see that the error in the HMD is getting worse and worse as we keep flying around the target area. We can see that area where it thinks the waypoint and now the new target is, is constantly shifting as we move, which of course is not ideal for when you're trying to engage ground targets through your HMD. But all is not lost. This is just a good illustration for you guys of how bad those HMD uh, misalignments can be and how they affect you in combat or just for regular housekeeping flying around trying to avoid traffic on say a cross-country flight. So we'll go ahead and put our autopilot on and we will go ahead and just fly nice and straight and level. For your alignment I highly recommend that you have the wings nice and straight and level and then we'll go over and actually complete the HMD alignment in flight so that way we can get everything good to go to engage those ground targets down there. I'm just going to make sure we're in navigation master mode. We're going to go down here to our menu support page, go to our bit, displays, HMD, and we will run our bit test for the helmet mounted display. Once it's cycled through all the different images, just hit stop, and you can go back to the support menu, go to the HMD OSB button. You can see that's newly populated now that we have a go on the bit page for the HMD. Then we just go to a line. We want to hold the two crosses as close together as we can with our track IR or our VR headset or whatever you're using to move your head around the cockpit. Press and hold the uncage button. It says alignment is okay. Now we'll just do some fine alignment on the X and Y axis using the TDC. We'll hit TDC to press to lock that in and we'll hit cage uncage once again to do a fine alignment on the roll using the small lower X down below. That looks pretty good. TDC to press to lock it in and now we are aligned. So let's go ahead and go back to air to ground master mode. And we'll bring our FLIR page up once more. And we will turn around and start to head back towards Damascus International Airport to show you guys that the alignment is now working really well for us. As you can see, there is no difference from the static symbology items 
like all those air data computer items such as airspeed, altitude, as well as the heading tape. Of course, Mach and G numbers also are unaffected because these are variables that do not change outside of our aircraft itself. So we will go sensor control switch forward and let's go ahead and put our target at the base of that fire once again. Boom, right there. And on our target pod, boom, right there, right at the base of that fire. That's exactly what we want. And now you guys can see that if you just align your HMD in flight, if you forget it uh, in the cold start procedure, you are good to go. There is nothing else you gotta do to make sure that you can get that HMD back aligned and make everything work correctly as advertised to uh, prosecute air or ground targets or just be able to see your teammates via the data link very, very easily. So just for the sake of showing you guys, we'll also delete this target and we'll do a waypoint designate. Waypoint designate. And again, now it is in the correct spot right next to that fire at Damascus International Airport. So I hope this was helpful for you guys and showing you guys that you can in fact align your HMD in flight as well as illustrate to you guys what the different errors are that you can uh, have occur when your HMD is misaligned. And it literally affects everything outside of your aircraft that is potentially moving around your aircraft. So being able to slew your radar in ACM modes via your head, slew the seeker for AIM-9 X-rays, see PPLIs from data links around you, as well as be able to use the HMD for prosecuting ground targets and seeing waypoints on the ground, targets on the ground in the correct spots. So it's a very critical item in the checklist for your startup of the FA-18, but if you do miss it or you have an issue with your HMD, you can always align it in flight. So if you liked the video, please give a like and a subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys.